welcome to Culture on I-24 News. I'm Oled Grober, thanks for joining me. Today on our program, we'll talk to artist Noa Yekutieli about her new book and exhibition. A pioneering circus school in Israel. And we'll hear of Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Oded Balilti. Noa Yekutieli is an American-born Israeli artist whose stark paper cutouts often show scenes of destruction. These days, she's publishing her first book, While They Were Moving, They Were Moved, based on a true story, accompanied by a new exhibition. And she's here in the studio to tell us all about it. Thanks for coming in, Noa. Thanks for having me. So your work deals with a lot of disasters and destruction. Why? <laughs> Well, what brought me to the subject of, of disasters, I started from natural disasters, actually, um, through the idea of memory and how our memory changes and goes so far away from what really happened. And people from very different places and times in the world who went through a natural disaster or different natural disasters have this collective memory or understanding mm -hmm. of, of loss and, and the process of dealing with this missing um, and on the other hand, people from exactly the same household that experience the same, the same thing have such different experiences and memory. And every time we think about what we went through in general in life, we change it according to our emotional ability to contain it. Um, so that's what actually brought me to, to disasters and to natural disasters. Where's your personal connection to that? Um, it's mostly it's mostly from the research of memory of like how how things when what happens when the physical um, anchors in our life are taken away right. in a, right. a very quick moment and how we rebuild what was and rebuild a new reality. At least attempt to. What what sort of research did you do? Um, it's more a visual metaphorical okay. uh, research, I guess, than. Uh, um, but I think that um, after my recent exhibition that was in the Wilford Museum um, here in Israel, then uh, it was in the last summer, um, and I felt that the, the man-made disaster um, that we live in here, yeah. uh, the conflict is, is the same kind of helplessness in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I started creating a series of pieces that, that's called uh, Summer 2014. Um, that it's a bit more abstract. It was very hard for me to go into the more human or emotional yeah. aspect of it. Um, and I started creating uh, the book as well. Right, so let's take a look at the book. This is obviously where, where the work takes a, a, a more political uh, turn as well. This last summer, the war in Gaza, uh, uh, many of the images here um, originated uh, there, am I right? Um, actually, only the outside book, like the show is more um, pieces that are based on photographs from Gaza and Israel, but the book is more the human behind it and the personal stories that don't necessarily have a connection to that. Um, like the whole idea of based on a true story, um, I think that sometimes we accept reality as something uh, that it's facts. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that there's so many perspectives looking at the same thing this destruction that we share together is uh, is an emotional state that we stand in, right. and un unlike my work, it's not black or white. It's yeah. much more complex, and we can't separate it. Yeah. Um, and the destruction is is also not only the Israeli Palestinian conflict. It's also between us and ourselves right. in a romantic human aspect of it. Oh yeah, destruction exists everywhere, no question about that. <laughs> Let's talk technique for a second, because these are all cutouts, am I right? Uh, no matter how fine the detail, this is you with, with a knife working on, a, on, a, on black paper cutting, cutting this stuff out. Right. Um, you know what brought me to deal with, like to start working in this technique, it, of course it started randomly, but with time the the idea of working, starting with a full or a whole black piece of paper mm -hmm. and then creating like peaks of, of hope or negative spaces that it's like moments that pass. And I'm actually, the negative spaces, the, the absence creates the story and the acceptance of, of um, losing information or, or material in order to gain um, a memory. Understand. I, I see. I think that's interesting. And you also uh, uh, do some installations. Um, how do you decide, I mean, does the idea that, that you have or the feeling that you want to convey, does that dictate the medium that you're going to use? 
Well, I usually always work into a space. Like it's very hard for me to just create, um, to come and just choose a few pieces and put them in, in the mm. space because the, the apps and the negative space in, in, in the gallery or in the museum are very uh, important to me as well. So I usually starts from a place where I see the, the, the space and then I start working into it and the pieces are more, uh, they stand for um, fragments mm. than, um, than pieces that have their sterile environment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the book is not just a, a collection of your work, there's also um, an essay or a letter, an essay in letter form, let's, let's uh, uh, call it, by uh, author uh, uh, Sarah Shiloh. How did that collaboration come about? Um, actually, I met her a few months ago and um, well, we know each other for a long time, but we, we met when I was working on the book and we started, uh, we had this very interesting conversation about um, the whole idea of truth. Um, and I think that what the letter in the book, it's a letter that is actually to me mm. um, from this fictive person. Mm. Um, and, and it doesn't really matter if it's fictive or not. Like that's ex what the book is actually talking about. If something a far away, experience could affect us in the same way as a personal first-hand experience well uh, uh, it's it's a very it's beautiful work and it's uh, touching and moving so I think that that uh, uh, was achieved very well and uh, once again thanks for coming in no thank you Moving on now, Orit Nevo is an uh, artist and pioneer of contemporary circus, an art that was virtually non-existent in Israel in the past. For, but for 15 years now, she's uh, been creating shows, mixing juggling acrobatics or uh, trapeze with the goal of bringing people together to work for peace. David Gombin and Pazit Dank met her, brought back this story. <laughs> If there's one thing that can bring peace to the Middle East, it's the circus. And that was the basis of the vision. This might sound a bit naive, but sometimes dreams come to life. Orit Nevo is beyond the ordinary person. She's a true pioneer of the contemporary circus, acrobatics, mimic, and art comedy. These are the keystones of her studies in Europe. France, Germany, Italy. After 10 years outside of Israel, she decided it was time for her to practice her career at home and therefore returned in 1999, right before the beginning of the Second Intifada. Difficult times she hadn't planned for. The idea that the circus will bring peace in the middle of an intifada is a bit weird, but it comes from the ideal of life, to create things that live and bring happiness in this region, not war, death attacks and all that. So we were three things in one. It was a school, it was a place of creation, and it was a venue. Her father wanted to buy her a house, but she said she preferred a tent. And just like that, the free dome was born. It was not easy at all to create the first action as the Free Dome project. It was a circus festival in Numelfachen, in fact, for children from the town, and then we brought uh, circus performers from France, we performed plays in the Palestinian Authority. So for us, it was really uh, necessary to say that we are here to create a kind of dialogue. De, de, de dialogue. Later, another project with a partner in the Gaza Strip took shape. For two years, dialogue was constant, but in 2007, Hamas took control of the Strip and the project had to stop. Since then, Orit Nevo's ON company is active almost exclusively abroad due to lack of financial support in Israel. Recently, she presented two new works in Marseille, a series of shows called Revolt. It is very important that we go there because both shows deal exactly uh, with what just happened in France, because there is a revolt in France now, the revolt for freedom, for the opportunity to speak. Well received by the French public, in Israel she managed to jumpstart a movement of circus arts, 
Several companies exist and more and more artists are trained. The proof south of Tel Aviv, the city of Bat Yam is preparing to host a festival of circus arts and street theater this coming August. Now we go to Calais to examine the passion fashion designer Cristobal Balenciaga had for lace. Sandy Fortis takes us on a tour of Calais' international city of lace and fashion. When we hear the name Balenciaga, we generally think runway, models and podium. Yet Cristobal Balenciaga was not only a great fashion designer, he was also a lace magician a facet of his creative personality that the public can discover at the City of Lace and Fashion in Calais. Balenciaga has used lace in very different and very original ways, every time differentiating himself from his contemporaries, such as Dior, who is still a fashion designer. He did transform dresses like the three you have here behind me, which are extremely interesting. His love for lace comes from his Spanish origins. The lace was very popular in Spain, and especially during the youth period of the creator in the 1920s. Cristóbal Balenciaga was inspired by the great masters of painting and from women in paintings by Goya, dressed in lace, sometimes with a pink ribbon as a belt or corset, an inspiration that can be noticed throughout the exhibition. The baby doll dress he invented in 1957 is one very clear example behind me. What was interesting was that he obviously imagined petticoats that could show off the chest size and which sometimes were even tied with a ribbon. It was both very stylish and at the same time a bit erotic since it showed off the size of the breast elegantly. Even beyond, Balenciaga also experimented with transparency and the showing of the skin. It was a classic. He was able to achieve exceptional pieces that were like sculptures, which are quite exceptional and can still be worn today. Long dresses, mid-long, short or evening dresses, but also accessories, gloves, hats and scarves. These are the exceptional works that the public can enjoy and even touch through this display of finely embroidered lace, according to the Balenciaga design. It's on exhibit at Calais until August 31st. Now, Michal Gurovic is already in the studio to talk some uh, photography for our photography segment. How are you doing? Very good. So, uh, just yesterday, the 2015 Pulitzer winners and finalists were announced. Um, Daniel Berhulak was awarded a first place uh, $10,000 award for his uh, coverage of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. He uh, spent four months in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and uh, Guinea covering this uh, horrible Tragedy. epidemic. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, touched it's, uh, thousands of people. Did you four know? Months. How did he recover from four months there? How did you know, he keep how, kept I, safe? I, 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 I'm just looking at the at the images, it's, and I'm, I feel like it's uh, it's hard. I'm yeah. thinking of spending, actually Harsh going and spending images. four months there. It's unbelievable. Did yeah. you know that there is only one Israeli photographer to have ever won the Pulitzer Prize? I do know, and do you know his name? Yes, his call. His name is uh, Oded Balilti, and he won uh, this prize for uh, this outstanding image of a lone Jewish settler um, challenging hundreds of uh, officers while uh, clashes Very erupted. Picture. Yeah, uh, these clashes erupted after the Supreme Court uh, cleared the way for the. Um, uh, demolition of nine houses at the Amona settlement mm -hmm. east of Ramallah. Um, very strong image. Yeah, uh, so uh, Balilti was born and raised in Jerusalem and uh, has started his photography way um, at the Bemachane uh, magazine, the Israeli army uh, magazine. He later on joined the Associated Press, um, AP as we all know it, uh, organization and was based in uh, Beijing for a while. He's currently living in Tel Aviv, covering uh, uh, current events and uh, making uh, documentary features for AP Israel. Mm -hmm. He's done many interesting projects in Israel and abroad. Um, one of them is called uh, Men in Black, where he uh, documented the, the ultra-Orthodox uh, Jewish community from really up close. Now, these are really closed communities. They usually don't like them being photographed and people getting into their communities. Yeah, outsiders are not let in, but exactly. uh, apparently he, he definitely got a... Uh, uh 
he managed to get in close and, and capture it. Mainly the way that they keep away from the modern and uh, Western influences. That's what right. he said was a... Right. Uh, What's he doing nowadays? Well, right now he has uh, an exhibition uh, called uh, Sabra Traces in the Eretz Israel Museum, um, where he... Um, really uh, made an up-close look of the Sabra uh, cactus tree, which is which symbolizes the Israeli yeah, native-born yeah. Israelis. And um, he says that each and every one of these Sabras has its own distinguished um, personality. And this uh, exhibition will be running until August 8th. And I highly recommend you go and see All it. All right, we uh, certainly will. Thanks, Michal. Thank and we you. should say that uh, uh, if you at home have uh, an idea for an exhibition you'd like us to talk about, our email is on the screen, so feel free to write in, tell us about it. Uh, we're done for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Culture. Until then, you can check out our website, i24news.tv. Thanks.